The toll booth in Stirling is most known for its music and arts. However, it was once known as the worst jail in Scotland due to its poor conditions and the way prisoners were treated. I spoke with David Kinnaird, a local historian, to learn more about the building itself and its grim past. Well, this is actually a bit of a jigsaw of a building. The original structure that we're aware of is 12th century. Um, there was a substantial wooden building here built in the late 15th, around 1482, 1485. Uh, the current building um, is part of three structures. The first is designed by Sir William Bruce of Kinross, the royal architect that was raised uh, the same year as the Act of Union, uh, 1706. Uh, in the 1680s, Gideon Gray, responsible for many of Stirling's most notable 18th century buildings, um, built an extension. And Sir Richard Crichton, the Edinburgh architect, constructed the prison block and courtroom that were added in 1820. We're currently sitting in the judge's robing room, currently the bar of the modern building uh, that was part of Crichton's uh, new building. What was the reason behind wanting these extensions done? Uh, the building was falling apart, essentially. Stirling Council historically has a, a great reticence of paying any money for the upkeep of the building. Um, the 16th century building regularly had problems with uh, jailbreaks, people simply knocking bricks loose and climbing through the wall, or in one notable instance in the 17th century, the press gang came to Stirling, smashed a hole in the outside wall with claw hammers and stole two prisoners were forced into servitude on His Majesty's ships for the next 10 years. Um, the court was still in operation, um, so the, the room in which we're now sitting, the bar, which was the judge's robing room, that would have been occupied. Um, and in the 1880s, when the old town jail uh, was seized by the British Army and turned into the national detention barracks for the Scottish regiments, um, the cells here were used on occasion, not very often, but there's one notable occasion in um, 1916 when a suffragette was arrested for throwing a brick at the Prime Minister when he was visiting the National Wallace Monument and she was locked up in the toll booth and subsequently re released because the conditions in this place were considered so bad that it warranted a description as a cruel and unusual punishment. Yeah. Stilling was until after the Union of Parliaments um, one of the key trading centres in Scotland. Uh, you'll notice the Dutch influence all around the town. Uh, Norrie's house, the town clerk's house, uh, facing the Tollbooth Tower in Broad Street on the other side of the street, um, is very much a Dutch designed. Cowan's Hospital, um, better known to many locals as the Guild Hall, the white building next to the Church of the Holy Rood, also has a very distinct Dutch influence. Holland was one of our main trading partners. Um, and it's not until our special trading rights as a royal borough, as opposed to a normal Scottish town or city, uh, were rescinded after the Union of Parliaments, that that influence and that connection starts to wane. Well, they found the, uh, the body of uh, two uh, executed criminals buried under the, um, the pend, that, which is now the main entrance to the building, leading into the ticket office. Um, one of them was Alexander Miller, uh, who was executed in the uh, 1830s. He um, was a petty thief and con man, a bit of a thug, uh, but had a reputation as a, a local Rob Roy because he stole from the rich. He stole from people who were um, largely despised by the general population, the magistrates, the landowners. Um, unfortunately, he didn't steal from the rich and give to the poor. He stole from the rich and kept it. And when he was arrested, he claimed that his grandmother was a witch from Denny, uh, who had put a spell on him that said he couldn't be executed uh, if he wasn't wearing his boots. So on the gallows, he took his boots off and threw them at the hangman, and was very surprised when he died. Um, we identified him because he was buried with his boots. Normally, they would have been given as um, one of the perks of the job to the hangman. He was allowed to keep the clothes of the executed person as a, as a perk. Um, the other set of remains they found under the main entrance was that of Alan Mayer, uh, an 84-year-old uh, farmer from Candy End, 
um, who had beaten his wife to death with a walking stick, claiming that she'd been consorting with soldier boys from the castle. She was 86, so I think you can probably gather his delusional state. Um, he was incarcerated here for 18 months and has the peculiar distinction of being the oldest man legally hanged by the courts in Britain in the whole of the 19th century and the last man to be publicly hanged in Stirling on October the 4th, 1842. After speaking with David Kennard at the toll booth, I visited the Smith's Art Gallery and spoke with Elspeth King, the director at the gallery, to learn more. Um, we have in this museum various items from the toll booth. Uh, no longer as the townhouse, the jail and everything else uh, for Stirling. So when the toll booth was refurbished um, at various points in the past, items uh, came to the museum collection. Other items of interest, we've got the stocks from the, the toll booth. Um, they were cared for by the toll booth, but generally they were out in the main street opposite the toll booth, and that's where malefactors were um, detained uh, for public display and um, punishment. There's seven holes in the stocks there, uh, which means that seven people could be trapped. Um, the toll booth really is the seat of government, so all the magistrates and town councillors meet there. Um, jailing people as we do today uh, wasn't really um, the idea. There had to be a secure prison for uh, offenders. Stirling Talbots was one of the worst places to be imprisoned, you know, it was really, really dreadful conditions. No, no sanitary um, requirements were there, uh, no washing facilities, they were just banged up. And for that reason, the, the next jail was built across the road and it was a celebration the day they were able to move the prisoners from the old system to the new system. If history is a study of change, then nothing exemplifies this more than the Stirling Toll Booth. Remaining at the heart of Stirling since the 1700s, the building has gone from one of the most notorious prisons in the country to a cultural hub for music and the arts to entertain generations to come. <laughs>